Hey everyone, Lucky here with Noisegate. Today we've finally got a chance to check out Astrolab. It's Arturia's first ever stage keyboard. I thought I'd go over a couple of the workflows that I've been really enjoying with my time with it so far. Uh, so let's dive straight into it. So the first thing you're gonna notice when you turn on Astrolab is the sheer amount of sounds out of this thing. I mean, I spent probably a good half an hour just scrolling through the different presets. And you, as you can see from the design, this central dial here lets you just sort of scroll through the presets, which each of them is a preset of Analog Lab, which is the software counterpart for V Collection, which is a collection of all their software instruments. As you can tell from the front panel, it's actually quite stripped back. And this is because they're basically putting analog presets in a keyboard and giving you the macro controls for that sound or that instance of Analog Lab right at your fingertips with the set of macros uh, the two F uh, FX inserts and the rhythm delay that you have on the front panel here. The interesting thing about this is that when you pull up a sound like the American Grand here that I have on here, you can start tweaking it with all the macro parameters that are important immediately so that you can change the sound quickly and on the fly to uh, something that you like. So for instance, this physically modeled American Grand is quite a bright sounding sound. So like if I play it now, So you can actually hear the, the, the ringing of the strings when the hammer hits the string. Um, but what I can do is if I actually turn the macro brightness down, it actually adjusts the physical nature of the hammer hitting the string. It's much more moody, much more like an artist like Niels Franz. So that's it with the brightness up. And if I turn the brightness down, You can hear the difference, it's much more muted and soft, and I can sort of get that very much, that sort of upright muted uh, piano sound. And so I can actually adjust the timber, the time and the movement, generally depending on the instrument, that will affect a different part of the uh, a different parameter of the sound. So for a synth, brightness might uh, change the cutoff and movement might cut off, might adjust like a, an envelope or a modulation source or something like that. Cool, so I've got a, a piano sound that I like, but I want to add something else to it. I actually want to add some strings to it. And I can do that because I can add a second part to this preset and create a bi-timbral preset in, uh, on Astrolab. And it's really quite simple. All I have to do is press part two, add a part and I can actually um, scroll through all the types, instruments. I can even scroll via artist, which is um, something different, but I can just basically go, cool, I wanna go to strings. Okay, this pulls up a preset from augmented strings, which is another instrument in V collection. I'm gonna go, yep, that sounds good. And now I've got my nice sort of Scandi mooted grand piano layered with a very full string orchestra. Now I could take that a step further. I probably wasn't happy with the octaves which were associated with each instrument. So I could take that a step further and actually say, cool, I want my strings played in a higher octave just by going into the settings and adjusting where each instrument starts and in which octave. That was really cool. I've got like a layered string bed with a grand piano. I can even take it another step further and split the key bed if I wanted the piano say in just the lower half of the key bed and the strings in the upper. This actually takes me to Astrolab Connect, which is the app that comes with Astrolab. Astrolab Connect just lets you store and manage Astrolab remotely from your phone. It just connects via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. I've got it connected via Wi-Fi at the moment. And it's really great because I can do almost everything that I just did, but via the app. So I can just go through, uh, let's go bass. I can choose a bass preset that I like. And you'll actually see it turns up 
instantaneously on Astrolab in real time. I can then go into that, edit the macro sounds of that sound, and you'll actually see when I adjust the brightness, for instance, the brightness on this macro also goes up. And the way I found this really useful is that browsing and organizing all the sounds that I liked on the app from here, because you know using a, sm a smartphone is much easier than this dial here, and then adjusting the macros and saving it and sort of going between the two as a sort of hybrid sort of workflow. That's how I found it really useful. Okay, great. So now I've plugged in my Astrolab to my computer and connected it directly to Analog Lab. This is a, a really great way to demonstrate the workflow of going from studio all the way to stage almost seamlessly, which I think is probably the most dynamic workflow and the most creative way to use Astrolab. One of the ways that I used this recently was I saw Loop Hop's uh, Daduk patch uh, that he uploaded recently which uh, mimics a Daduk via the ARP2600. So what I did is I opened up Analog Lab, opened up the ARP2600V, which is their emulation of the ARP2600, and patched it myself from his video and saved it as a preset in Analog Lab. And then basically what I did is I assigned some macros, saved it as a preset, and then ported it to Astrolab. And so now I have my Daduk patch as a standalone instrument in Astrolab, which I can take with me to rehearsal or a gig and perform with as I would uh, any other preset. This is kind of the most effective way to use Astrolab and perhaps why they only went for a stripped back design like this because I've seen a lot of comments about people saying well it doesn't give you enough controls and there's not enough hands-on controls for say an instrument like the ARP2600 but realistically when I'm on stage all I want is the key parameters and the key uh, sound design that I want to be tweaking and performing with. And let's be honest, I only really need four at a time when I'm playing as a keyboard player. Um, and I really, really want to sort of keep all the patching and tweaking to in the studio. And that's what Astrolab does really well is that it allows me to port the two together uh, really seamlessly. So there you have it. There's a couple of workflows that I've really enjoyed using uh, in my time with Astrolab so far. Um, I think I'm only scratching the surface too. I mean, I haven't seen an instrument like Astrolab that combines so many sounds and so many different instruments to a level that this can. And I think that's just one of the most powerful things about Astrolab. Let me know what you think. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts about Astrolab so far. Um, I'll see you in the next one.